Welcome back you guys to the channel. So today I'm gonna kind of go over a little bit of another subject regarding or more in depth regarding propellers. Um, kind of seems like, you know, there's so many ones out there, so, di so many different types, you know, what all the numbers mean. Um, and you know, that's what we're gonna kind of go over a little bit. You know, it's gonna be a little bit of a lengthy video. Hopefully I'm gonna explain this pretty good you know about some of the numbers how to kind of read them off a little bit the understanding and you know when you're trying to find propellers or try to figure out you know what should be the next one so you know i got a whole bunch right here these are a lot of them from you know what i run this is coming out of my property and each one is different to different bo uh, different boats some of them are playing around some of them are you know a couple of my you know faster speed props my ovals it all kind of depends everyone each one has a uh, different purpose to it you know some of them are a high lift some of them are low lift some of them are modified um, to make them do different things you know all kind of varies so first thing we're going to first cover is um, the numbers what does the numbers mean so for example you know here's a octura hopefully you guys can see that a little bit this is the octura 442 X442. Now, the, there's an X, there's an M. Um, now, Octor also breaks it down to a few different categories too, and you can look it up on Octor's website to also state, you know, if it's a high lift, if it's a low lift, you know, what type of prop and kind of what it somewhat is meant for. Some of them are universal, some are for mono, some are for hydros, catamarans, um, you know, riggers, you know, it's all kind of, you know, Kind of varies on it so to cover over numbers so octura go, uses a three digit number you know as you can see here this is a 442 so a three digit number so octura's numbering the first number represents the pitch the last two represents the diameter of the propeller and you'll find that very common with their three digit numbering so if you guys so um when looking at them so the first number so that's a four. So that would, um, so we would do one point then four. So 1.4 pitch at a four, 42 diameter propeller. So that will explain this guy here. So here's like another one right here. This is a Octurus 645. So it's 1.6 pitch to a 45 millimeter diameter uh, propeller. And so, you know, this is also going to be in inches, then millimeter. They, most manufacturers are not really consistent with the numbering. So each manufacturer is a little bit different when it comes to it. Um, so Octura uses me, um, millimeter and metric when they're numbering the propellers. Now, ABC, on the other hand, uses inches. And, you know, like here, you know, this one is a 1.8 is a um, eight, it's an 1814 on this one here. So a, B, so the first number represents diameter, second number represents pitch. So this would be 1.8 by 1, 1 1.4 pitch on ABC. So ABC is, diam, is diameter then pitch. And this is again in inches. Now if you get into like the CNC propellers, um, uh, here's, you know, finding one on somewhere in here. Okay. So like, here's a CNC propeller right here. This is a 4219. So with the CNC, you know, the first two numbers represents diameter and millimeter. Last two numbers represent the pitch. So, you know, 1.9 and this is a 42 millimeter propeller. So um, when you're looking up like on many various different websites, propellers, stuff like that, you know, if it's CNC, first two digits are diameter, last two digits are, are the pitch, ABC, you know, first two digits are the diameter, second two is a pitch, Octura, first number represents the pitch, which you gotta add that one in front of it, so one point, you know, whatever that first number represents, then your diameter, which is, then, it, then it's inches and millimeters when it comes to Octura. Now, there's other propellers out there like Pranther. Um, you know, some some numbers. You know, what 
they will stay will not be you know may be different so you got to look at the um, description on the propellers kind of really represent what you know their sizing and then what their sizing are now we're gonna go a little more in depth hopefully you guys can follow me a little bit with this um, so going over you know I wrote this down to kind of make it a little bit clearer so you know the breakdown of the propellers ABC CNC you know how the numbers kind of represent well another interesting thing with numbers with the propellers is they actually mean something so um, if you take like an ABC 1716 which is a 1.7 and you times it by the pitch a one, um, uh, times it by the pitch so 1.7 by 1.6 you know times that you know actually will give you you know how much <clears throat> your inches per rpm so when the propeller spins you know through the water like this that means you know for you know every in, uh, so every revolution this prop is going to move forward you know what you know per um you know the rated in statement on the propeller on um, the diameter to the pitch so so kind of kind of cool breakdown from there then you can really if you want to break it down you know you can take your volts to your kv you know you can times that and figure out your max unloaded rpm um and then you know really goes down more into detail exactly how you can break it all down and actually use the numbers on the propeller to kind of figure out a baseline a little bit about what the boat's going to do now you know there's going to be some other variables like you know motor efficiency hull efficiency propeller slip you know those all got to be kind of factored in um and so each hull type has you know efficiency rating of you know anywhere from 30 percent to all the way down to you know 15 percent depending on if it's a mono catamaran um or you know depends on what the hull type propeller type and you know how you know how it's set up so a little bit going over you know what the numbers represent and kind of covering on that so now knowing what the represent the numbers kind of represent you know the biggest question is um you know especially like rtr boats ready to run boats you know what propeller is a good propeller to upgrade now you run into so many types it's hard to really you know state what is a good propeller because of so many factors within the motor system, battery size, KV, and you know, is it gonna work for 4S? Is it gonna work for six, um, eight, 12, you know, et cetera. And so each system will represent. So the easiest way just even for yourself to kind of to even kind of do that, you know, figure out what is a good prop, it will take a little bit of testing to do it. And, you know, you, you know, kind of look at the CNC aluminum propellers or, you know, they're a pretty good price and they will work out pretty good for, to, you know, testing, you know, what propellers on a boat and how to kind of, you know, factor them on a, on a better price. And then once you figure it out and once you find that one prop that you like in the boat likes, then, you know, you can look into, you know, Octura, ABC or, you know, higher, you know, ones that are very similar in that size. Now, let's, you know, kind of covering a little bit about that. So say, you know, you have... Um, you know, an RC boat, for example, um, shoot, I don't know. So basically just in a general RC boat, it comes with, you know, such and such propeller. Now, if you can figure out what is your diameter and that pitch of that propeller, then we can start working off of a baseline on what we're going to start doing. Now, again, we're going to take this, you know, 442 would be a perfect example, 42 millimeter by 1.4 pitch. So, you know, I purchased a boat, it came with this prop, but I want to go faster or, you know, I want a better prop. So what you do is you take those numbers. So it's a 42 mil by 1.4 pitch. So now what's the easiest way to do it is start increasing your pitch. So my next prop I'm going to look at would be a 42 millimeter by 1.6 pitch. So you slowly start increasing your pitch. And so that would bring me up to, you know, this 640, um, you know, bring me up to like a 642. So then, you know, I would run that, you know, then I'll run that on the boat, see how it kind of does, you know, if the temperatures are really low, 
Um, you know, they're still, you know, with, you know, very reasonable, you know, good run times. And now what's, you know, let's step that up a little bit more. So now you can either take that pitch up and go higher to like a 1.7, 1.8, or the easiest thing is, is, you know, jump a diameter too. So, you know, 42 to, you know, 43, 44 mil prop. So we're gonna jump the diameter, but then we're gonna reduce the pitch. So we're gonna come back down to a 44 um, pitch. So because, you know, we're going up on the diameter, we wanna drop on pitch because, you know, if we push it too hard under testing, we can easily fry something, we can easily, you know, damage something. So, you know, if you're staying, you know, within a low pitch on your very, um, when you're kind of upsized on your diameter, then you should be okay um, for just testing purposes. And so for testing, you know, you just go around, you know, do a couple ovals or a couple laps, come back, check your temperatures, and, you know, having a good heat gun um, to monitor your temperatures is the best because you're going to get your most accurate versus, you know, put your hand on it and, you know, oh, you know, it's, it's cold. You know, that's not a really good accurate way. You know, you want to have, you know, temps, you know, within, you know, that 100 to about 130 range, you know, maximum. You know, if you're in there, you're good. You know, if you're really low and you're saying you're at 90 degrees, you know, you can easily, you know, go up higher. But if you're just using your hand, you don't know. You know, it's hard to make an accurate reason. So, you know, this is what I do is I'll slowly, you know, I'll increase the pitch to, to a point and then I'll start, you know, up going on to the diameter, decrease pitch and then increase pitch and so forth until I keep going. And to the point to where, you know, I'll start kind of jumping and, you know, one boat, you know, I'm now, you know, I went from, you know, 1814, which is about a 46 millimeter, 47 millimeter by 1.4. And I jumped all the way up to a 50 millimeter by 1.4. And that really, uh, you know, really kind of peaked the performance out of the boat, which is, you know, this red mono you see in the picture. Now that one's a, running on a 4S system. 6S is gonna be a little bit different when it comes to that. So that's how I do it. You know, for the people kind of in search of, you know, what is kind of some different props. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you have to kind of experiment to figure, you know, find that right pop, prop. Um, another helpful thing, you know, I'll do this is, you know, my book, you know, I say don't, you know, don't use because, you know, it's my book I use for a lot of my testing, you know, a lot of my note taking when it comes to, you know, boats, you know, how they kind of run. So, you know, for example, you know, this is part of my ledger from, you know, late last year into the beginning of this year when I was doing a lot of testing on, you know, one style boat. And I'm trying to, you know, figure out that prop, that prop that I really likes and that setup. So, you know, I took, you know, a lot of notes. It's like, you know, what is my drive setup? You know, what prop am I running, which is a 4414. You know, my motor setup is a 2000K six pole. Um, and, you know, from, you know, my temps was 90 degrees at 43 miles an hour running um, you know, two, you know, four S, you know, 6,000, uh, light bulbs. Now, again, you know, I went back out there again, you know, running a different motor, um, different prop, which is a 4316, um, which I, you know, for, uh, which at 120 degrees, I got 48 miles an hour. So, you, the, you know, this setup here improved it over my top setup. And so this is a good way you start kind of, you know, recording everything from, you know, what's your setup, what is, you know, um, you know, where trim tabs are set or where the strut height is set, what batteries, what prop, what motor. And so now way you start keeping a log and you can start really finding out, you know, what is some good setups. And so like, you know, for, you know, last one here, you know, this is a 43 millimeter by uh, 1.5. <clears throat> you know, with, you know, 2,070 kV motor, um, you know, with, you know, timing at 15 degrees and gave me 50 miles an hour on a 4S setup, you know, temps at 125. So, you know, here, you know, I was running a 44, you know, the kV was at 2,000, so this one's 70 more kV, but you can see, you know, I had a kind of a big increase. So, you know, this one here, you know, I was running that one for a while, until you know, I start playing around more. So this is a good way to log. 
And so, you know, another good, great way of doing this, especially if, um, you know, you don't really have a good data logging system, you know, Castle Creations has came out with, you know, a couple speed controls, um, especially the newest version here that you can easily, you know, plug into the computer, get your data logging, like your RPMs, um, your RPMs, you know, what's your wattage, your voltage, and really breaks it down even farther. You know, and that's for the people that, you know, really want to, you know, take it to one more step, you know, get all those numbers, um, data log even deeper. And that's, you know, really how you're going to, you know, really succeed and push, you know, faster with the boats because then you're getting all the feedback that you need to know, you know, what the boat is doing, what, you know, how much your prop slip is, how the hull is handling, you know, your RPMs, and you kind of break it down a little bit more. So, um, you know, this is one of my, you know, this is what I do. You know, one of my suggestions, like if people are kind of wanting to figure it out more and you have a little bit more fun, kind of experiment and, and doing it. And so this works out pretty good. And then once you kind of figure out those basic numbers, you know, for the people getting into pro, uh, propeller balancing, you know, that's another art to it. There's so many different, you know, modifications you can do. <clears throat> um, and so, you know, the world's, you know, it's kind of endless on what you can do. So like, you know, here's one, you know, for example, it's got a, you know, bar cut right there, which also, hope, if you guys can see it, will help with, um, you know, reducing load on the propeller, allowing the RPMs to kick up. You know, this one also, you can see, you know, I cupped it, you know, bent the tips out a little bit more, cut the tips. And so this one was, you know, fully uh, worked on, which is actually the one for this setup gave me the 50, 50 miles an hour. Now, you know, here is, like, here's another one here. You know, this is the, this is the, um, you know, Pro Boat UL19 prop. And so this one was, if you can see it a little bit, getting to try to focus is you can see this edge right here is known as a back cut. So you kind of cut down and then you take it at an angle up to the tips. Another way to reduce load, get that propeller to spin up more RPM, you know, drop your, your amps or your wattage on, you know, on your system, you know, reduce weight, um, reduce heat. So like, you know, here's another, you know, 1815, like you'll see another one, you know, this has, you know, been cupped here, you know, the, the, the tips have been cut Tips have been cut on, uh, cupped on this one here. Um, so basically cupping is what you do is you kind of grab it and you kind of roll your the edge over. Now cupping will also, you know, channel that water flow down, you know, give me a tighter pattern. Um, and then also will sometimes add a little bit more lift to the propeller if it's needed. Now you, you'll see other ones. Um, this one I'm gonna modify next is rounding the ears when you and round the ears on the uh, propeller so now when you do that you're actually achieving two things one is you're reducing the load on the propeller so basically you know less load less heat uh, pick up a little bit more rpms and um, sometimes if the you know it may be beneficial to the system maybe not you know experimenting is the easiest way to tell and you know trying it from there and so, you know, you'll get that from like, if you round it, you'll get that a little bit of lift plus a um, decrease in the load and gain a little bit more RPM. Now, when you round it, you take down the diameter. So you do want to be careful, you know, reducing the diameter. So, you know, this one's a big prop, so it's a 1.9. And, you know, I'm gonna round it on this one and more turn it into like a 1.8 diameter prop. So it's a little bit smaller, but it carries a little bit higher pitch than some of my other ones. So again, you know, this is kind of how you learn. You just experiment, try it, and you know, if it works, great. If it doesn't, then, you know, there's just it's just what it is. So, well, hopefully you guys like the content a little bit. S sorry for the lengthy video, a little bit more in depth. Hopefully you guys follow along. You know, again, you know, here's that. So, but uh, thanks for watching. You know, please like and uh, like to subscribe if you want more content like this and you know, kind of helping, you know, the general hobbyist out and, you know, learning and going from there. So thank you for watching.